Hey, Color of Truth family, this is Professor Green coming with another segment of Color of Truth where we reveal the real color of all truth. As we continue with Black History, Affinity, and Beyond, I wanted to share something with you that gentleman that I just took a picture of and showed you was O.W. Gurley. 1868 to 1935. What's significant is, let me show you this right here. While I picked, I went in the African diaspora store and I picked up this. The ABC of Black Wall Street coloring book. And I got that for my grandchildren for them to color and to learn also some black history. The scientists, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it because black history is every day, all day. And you can find it anywhere if we do the research and just dig. So I turn to this page. And I said, let me find out about this gentleman. So I'm going to share a little bit of information because he was one of the wealthiest black men at the time. And he also owned a hotel and a number of other businesses in the Greenwood District in Oklahoma. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this is one of the questions I always ask. If they could do this in the middle of somebody like O.W. Gurley could do this in the, in the middle of vehement racism in the early 1900s. What's stopping us today? Now, I'm not. Please excuse me for my ignorance. If there are some black owned hotels, but are there enough of them? So let's dig into Mr. Gurley. His name was Ottawa Gurley. Is remember as remember as one of the wealthiest men in Tulsa, Oklahoma before the 1921 Tulsa Massacre. Destroyed his property and forced him to flee. Ottawa Gurley was born on Christmas Day in 1868 to free slaves in Huntsville, Alabama. Gurley grew, grew up in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. So anybody in Arkansas, you need to research O.W. Gurley or Ottawa. He was self-educated. For those of you that don't think that blacks were educated during this time. He was self-educated and eventually married his childhood sweetheart, Emma. After a brief time as a teacher, he worked for the U.S. Postal Service. In 1893, Gurley participated in the Cherokee Outlet Land Rush in Indian Territory, a state they claim in Perry, Noble County. Gurley ran unsuccessful for treasurer of Noble County, but later became principal of the town school and operated a general store in the community. I remember those generals off of East Broad. My grandmother's house is still there in Savannah, Georgia. And there was Bynes Grocery Store. And Bynes Grocery Store is across the railroad track on 32nd Street, 31st or 32nd. And they lived up top. And at the bottom was a convenience store. And then you go in the back and I would purchase meat for my grandmother in the 1980s, the early 1980s. Let's get back to Mr. Gurney. In 1905, Gurley and his wife sold their property in Noble County and moved 80 miles to the oil boom town of Tulsa. Gurley purchased 40 acres of land in North Tulsa and established his first business, a rooming house on a dusty road that would become Greenwood Avenue. He subdivided his plot into residential and commercial lots and eventually opened a grocery store. Residential, and, uh, residential properties and you run them as a rooming house or a boarding house now. Hey, you might can follow after Mr. Girl and, and have a mixed community for residential and commercial. Here's a little, you dig into the past to represent and to, to do what you need to do in the future. Our past dictates our future. As the community grew around him, just like our communities are doing now, Gurley prospered. Between 1910 and 1920, the black population in the area he had purchased grew from 2,000 to nearly 9,000 in a city with a total population of 72,000. The black community had a large working class population as well as doctors, lawyers, and other professionals who provided service to them. Soon, the Greenwood section 
was dubbed Negro Wall Street by Tulsa Tuskegee educator Booker T. Washington. Greenwood now called Greenwood now called Black Wall Street was nearly self-sufficient with black owned businesses, many initially financed by Gurley. He financed most of the Greenwood businesses, according to this document, ranging from brickyards and theaters to a charter airplane company. Gurley built the Gurley Hotel at 112 North Greenwood and rented out spaces to smaller businesses. There go another nugget for y'all who have empty houses or commercial properties. Rent them out to other businesses so they can have low overhead. All right. His other properties include a two-story building at 119 Green North Greenwood, which housed the Masonic Lodge and Black Employment Agency. He was also one of the founders of Vernon AME Church. Gurley's prosperity ended in 1921. Racial tensions in Tulsa, which had been rising since the red summer of 1919, finally erupted on May 30, 1921. Dick Rowland, a teenage a black teenager, was accused of sexually assaulting Sarah Page, a white woman. And in response to a white mob form and intent on lynching Rowland, who was held at the court, county courthouse. Gurley, a sheriff deputy charged with patrolling the black community, tried to make peace as racial tensions flared. When blacks vowed to protect Roland from lynching and descended on the county courthouse, a scuffle between a white man and a black man erupted in a gunfighting spot where many would call the Tulsa Massacre. Not Tulsa riots like some people try to say. Tulsa Massacre because it was a massacre. There's a difference between a riot and a massacre. The riot is trying to place blame on the victim. But this was a massacre. By the time the massacre ended on the morning, and just like some of the massacres that's happening today, by the time the massacre ended on the morning of June 2nd, approximately 300 black people were killed. Black Wall Street was burned to the ground and Gurley had lost the majority of fortune estimated to be nearly 200,000, which was a lot in that day. Gurley was arrested for inciting the conflict, but implicated two other black leaders. Fellow wealthy businessman J.B. Stratford, which I'm going to talk about him in a later, um, in a later segment and newspaper editor A.G. Smitherman to secure his release. He then fled to Los Angeles, California, where he and his wife ran a small hotel. Old W. Gurley died 14 years later at the age of 67. Once again, the question is, if they was able to do this and Old W. Gurley, Ottawa Gurley, was able to do that then in the, in the, in the, in the, in the midst of vehement racism, then what's stopping us from all of these black millionaires all these black billionaires from opening hotels, theaters, you know, and, and creating a, 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 another black Wall Street in every city. We can do it. Stay focused. Keep pressing. Make sure you hit those subscribe buttons, like, share, comment on it. If you're from Arkansas, you're from Greenwood and you see this video, tell a little, tell the people a little bit about your history and if you were familiar with the story of O.W. Gurley, you can be able to speak to it. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Color of Truth.